Hello, my name is David Taylor, and I've been fortunate enough to play the bassoon since I was about 16 years old in 1958 to the present. So I had a professional career. I played in the Spokane Symphony from 1960 to 1966, and I played in the Seattle Symphony from 1968 till 2002, at which time I moved to Longview and joined the Southwest Washington Symphony, uh, which I'm very, very pleased to be associated with, because I, I, never, I never dreamed that I would be able to play in an orchestra as fine as the orchestra that we have here in Longview. So I'm holding in my hand two bassoons. Now a bassoon, unlike a clarinet, is a double reed instrument. A clarinet has a, has a mouthpiece and a single reed. A bassoon is a double reeded instrument, and I will show you the double reed in a minute. The instrument here in my left hand is the bassoon as it looked in about 1820. And if you can see that the holes in the instrument are basically the same as they are in the modern instrument, which was made in about 1960. And so if you were a musician in that, at that time, playing Mozart and symphonies and Beethoven symphonies, uh, you'd be competing against the strings, who were perfect because their instruments were perfectly developed at that time. But the clarinet players, the flute players, and the bassoon players, and of course most of the brass, we were, they were struggling with instruments that were very, very imperfect at the time. So the, the performers, the manufacturers, and the composers all put their heads together, and starting at about in the early 1820s up through about 1850 or 60, all the instruments were, were improved upon. The clarinets were improved by the by the, the BAME system, and the bassoons were taken over by a company called Heckel Almenrader in 1830. And they took this and basically turned it into this. So by 1870 or so, I'm going to put this down. By 1870, the bassoon as we now know it existed. And so what did they do? They made the, the bore better, they added keys so that you could have more facility on the instrument and, and play more difficult passages. So the, the bassoon is in the key of C, which means it's a non-transposing instrument, so that I, the bassoon could read piano music and not have to transpose. So uh, you'll notice that I've had this, this tail been hanging down here. In the United States, bassoons are played with what they call a seat strap. So the weight of the instrument is carried on the strap that you sit down on. In Germany, they use a neck strap, and we, some people use a neck strap in the United States, but they use a, a device called a balance hanger, which transfers the weight up a little higher so that it's more balanced. So I will now sit down and I will try to play for you something, and then I will show you what the reeds are. This piece is called a crook, or a vocal, and it's the first part of the instrument for after the reed. So the reed, this is a double reed, uh, two pieces of cane upon itself. This is, this is a piece of cane that actually comes in a, you can imagine a, a, like a broom handle, a piece of cane that's cut into sections, and then it's cut into, it's divided into pieces like this. And so that when a player such as myself gets it, we have to do a couple of things to it. We have to make this piece, this shape, you can see how it's shaped now, and we use a, a device like this, it's called a shaper. And so we put this cane on the shaper, and then cut it away with a knife to that shape. Then we bend it over on itself, so that it looks like this. So it's, this is the point at which we bend it, so that it looks like this. And then after that happens, we wrap uh, thread around it in order to keep it, keep it, uh, keep it from un being undone. And also the weight of the thread means that if you drop it, it will end, land on, on the, the bottom end instead of on the blade. So that's basically how, how it's made. So the, the, the bassoon reed is basically a vibrating medium. It's just a squawk. When you put the squawk on a tube, you get a tone, but of course you can't play anything on that because it's only one, one note. You can't t change the air column. So you put this on the bassoon, which is in three parts. The wing joint, the boot joint, which comes down here and then bends back on itself. There's a U-tube here, so it comes down and then bends back and goes up this side, up, up to the bell.
Well, I was fortunate enough to play this instrument in the Seattle Symphony for a good part of my career. And it is a Heckel bassoon, the same company that developed it, the bassoon from the 1830s up to the present. Now the bassoon is the tenor solo voice of the symphony and has lots of delightful things to play. And one thing you've probably heard it play is from Peter and the Wolf, and it plays the part of the grandfather. the bassoon and there are lots of other lovely things that the bassoon plays. Uh, there is a lovely solo in a piece called Scheherazade. soon and now I'm going to show you another instrument called the contra bassoon. Now this instrument is also a heckle contra bassoon. It was made in 1909 but despite the fact that it's over 100 years old it is a perfectly functioning viable modern instrument by any sense of the word. And part of this reason is because bassoons are made out of maple. And maple can last a very, very long time. An oboe or a clarinet, which are made out of grenadilla wood, after hard professional service of about 10 years, no matter how well you take care of it, the bore will get out of round. And then the instrument cannot really be played professionally any longer. But the bassoon is not like that. The maple of the bassoon will last indefinitely if it's taken care of and uh, swapped out and just get taken, just sent to repairmen once, once in a while. So I have another heckle bassoon made in 1905, and that's a lovely instrument. It doesn't sound quite as loud as the more modern instrument, which was made in 1960, but nevertheless, it is still a fully pro viable professional instrument. So this contra bassoon, as I said, was made in 1909. It was ordered by somebody in New York City. And I don't know exactly who played it, but I would like to imagine that it was played in the New York Philharmonic, which since, uh, but that's just a guess on my part. But anyway, the contra bassoon goes an octave below the bassoon. <laughs> Any of you who have ever seen uh, uh, Peter Pan know that there's a famous song that the crocodile has when the crocodile comes into the cave uh, uh, after, after Captain Hook. There's a great song that the crocodile bassoon plays. It's a fun instrument to play, and uh, it has a unique quality. Uh, uh, when it's played, you'll, if you don't hear it, you'll feel it through the floor. So it's a wonderful instrument to, uh, to be associated with, and I've been very fortunate to, to be able to play both, both instruments. So that's the bassoon and the contra bassoon, and I'm happy to have made this presentation to you, and I hope I'll see you at symphony. <laughs>